Hey guys, this is April, and today we're going to talk about the trends in neoclassical art. So let us first focus on subject matter. There are three major subjects that neoclassical artists emphasize in their works. First is portraiture. Portraiture is always a biggie, it seems like, regardless of what time period you're covering. Another common subject that artists depicted was history paintings. This can be things that happened in the far distant past to things that are more contemporary. For example, this painting by Benjamin West. This event happened 11 years ago, but to them this was a contemporary event. It was actually controversial because the soldiers were in contemporary dress. The monarchy refused to buy this piece. The public, though, loved the painting. The last subject matter that is heavily focused on in artwork during this time, and part of the reason why we call this neoclassical or new classical is, well, classicism. We see emphasis on mythology as well as history events that happened during antiquity. The subject matter we don't see in neoclassical art are very religious paintings, as well as paintings focused on love and sensuality, like we saw during the Rococo time period. Now there's a very clear reason why this is happening during neoclassical art. The big reason we don't see many religious artworks or artworks that focus on love in the monarchy or aristocrats is because of the Enlightenment and the people behind that movement. People of the Enlightenment believed that practical experience as well as observation were the best approaches when it came to understanding the world rather than religion or abstract thought. We also see an emphasis on the promotion of the idea of liberty and equality. Not for women, mainly for men though. Now these ideas strongly impacted what type of art was created during this time. People during this time wanted democracy. They also wanted a separation of church from state, as well as no monarchy. So that's part of the reason why we don't see many religious works, as well as paintings that emphasize the aristocracy. This is also why we see a very strong classical influence of art of this time period, is because the culture greatly respected the ancient Greeks and Romans because of their democratic government. Now, even though we don't see many religious works during this time, artists were still expected to have a moral message in their paintings. One of the most common moral messages that we see during this time is self-sacrifice or working for the common good of the people. Some art, though, comes off as just straight-up propaganda. A lot of the art that we see during this time was created during the French Revolution or during the time in which Napoleon rises to power. The Death of Marat by David is a great example of both. Not only is it promoting the idea of self-sacrifice, essentially Marat is shown like a martyr, a Christian martyr, like Christ in a way, but it also is propaganda for the French Revolution. David has taken some artistic liberties with this piece for the sake of politics. For example, Marat would have been in a very luxurious bathroom, but in this painting, the bathroom is very simple. We also see that Marat has been shown as a very handsome individual, but in real life, Marat had a nasty skin condition in which he would have to bathe frequently. So Marat would have not been pretty on the eyes to say the least. Referencing religious imagery, glorifying death, as well as tweaking the story for the sake of the message, these were all common trends during neoclassicism. Another trend that was a result of the Enlightenment that we see in art during this time period is a lack of ornamentation. For example, when we look at the Chiswick House, there's very, very little ornamentation and it's only white. Ornamentation was connected to the church and to the monarchy. So artists during this time period made works that were much more simple and less gaudy. One other characteristic that's common in neoclassical work is the emphasis on structure and control. Compositions are highly structured, they have lots of angular forms, bodies are arranged often in triangular formats. The Oath of Horatii is a very good example. When you look at the men giving the oath to their father, their bodies are so rigid that you can clearly see the triangular form that their bodies create. 
we also see control in the emotions that we see in these paintings. Now, the emotions are very intense, but they're not over the top. For example, if we go back to this painting by David, if we look at the women, the women are mourning. But at the same time, they're controlled. Their eyes aren't red. We don't see loads and loads of tears crawling down their face. They aren't ripping out their hair. It's almost so controlled that they seem like they're asleep or don't care. So that's what I mean by controlled emotion. So that's all I have for the trends of neoclassical work. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below.